The Growing Together expansion pack brought a lot of new family gameplay features for adults and babies, but I feel like it sort of left out teens and elders. Teens just had the high school years pack, but that seemed to fall a bit flat for me, and elders are perpetually underrepresented in this game. So today, I'm going to do my part to rectify this. I was brainstorming what sort of community lot both teens and elders would enjoy frequenting, and came up with a bowling alley plus food hall. I figured both elders with their bowling leagues and teens having a night out with friends would enjoy coming out to a lot like this. I was sure to include items for all ages and even pets, so everyone is welcome here, but my main focus was for a teen and elder hangout spot. So this is what we're building today. Usually I start out by creating the shell of the building and getting it to look how I want and then filling in the interior later. But with this build, since the main features of this lot are the bowling alley and the food stalls, and they're all quite large, I put those down first to make sure I had room for everything, then I worked the shell around them. I used a mix of full and half walls to make these food stands look more like built-in restaurants than standalone food stalls. I also wanted to add in more dimension by including different platform heights inside to make it look a little bit more dynamic since the overall building shape is quite simple. So the area where the food stands are is raised up, and then the dining area is sunk down a bit and even with the patio outside. I also added in some platform height differences over in the bowling alley too. I put in a second story to be a more casual dining and rec room space. So there's more picnic tables, a few games, and comfier seating up here. I imagine this building is some sort of a converted factory or a warehouse that has lots of high ceilings and industrial features. These sorts of food halls, breweries, and trendy activity spaces always seem to be built in old industrial neighborhoods of cities in real life, so I ran with that in here too. Moving over to the bowling alley, I wanted this raised platform bit to be a bar with some arcade games because I feel like those are mandatory secondary features of any bowling alley. Since this room is just one giant rectangle, I added in some pillars into the corners and boxed in the bar. These changes, along with the different platform heights, definitely helped add in some more visual interest into this space. It took me way too long to sort out the wallpapers and color scheme for this room, so I just cut out all that tedious back and forth I did to spare you all some of that pain. I ended up going with a lot of teal, orange, and black for this room, similar to what we have going on in the rest of the building, just a bit darker. Mixing that 3D black wallpaper from Moschino stuff with the different wood panelings and metal accents again helped to create more dimension so that this room doesn't feel so flat and cavernous. I initially had two arcade systems flanking the bar, but I didn't like how symmetrical it was looking, and since we still only have one type of arcade game for some reason, I swapped one of them out for that jukebox instead. After I got the colors and main decor sorted, the next thing to do was change up the lighting to really set the mood. So I added in a bunch of colored lights and turned the brightness way down. This process was made much better by using Twisted Mexi's Better Build By mod, which, among so many other things, allows you to do more customization with your lights and change it in build mode. This is especially helpful for lots like this where you're wanting to set up a bunch of mood lighting. I'll link the mod in the video description if you want to get it for your game too. It is definitely an essential in my game. For some reason, the food stall in the corner there wouldn't snap to the height of the platform like the other ones and kept sinking down to ground height. I did everything I could think of to try to fix it, but nothing would work. The thing I had to do to finally get it to work was build a separate room, raise that platform up to the same height as the other area, put the stall in there, move that whole room back into the main building, then delete the walls to that box. It was super frustrating, but I figured it out eventually. So hopefully you can learn from my struggles, so if you run into a similar issue with platforms, maybe this approach will help. Moving back upstairs, I'm going through and adding in more detail and decor up here. Like I said, my main focus for this build was for teens and elders to use it, but I still want everyone in your sim household to have stuff to do too. 
So up here I put some toys that kids, toddlers, and infants can use in the corner by the sitting area. Having the kids section right next to the darts area would be a dangerous thing to do in real life, but this is The Sims and they're not going to accidentally throw a dart into a kid's face. So it's totally fine, don't worry about it. Put some pet supplies up here. There's a pet bed, food bowl, some toys, and a cat scratcher upstairs. I also added in a few more pet bowls and toys downstairs too. I have three dogs myself and always appreciate when public spaces are pet friendly. My corgis are definitely not well behaved enough to come to a place like this. I could maybe bring some of them individually and they'd be okay, but all three of them as a group is just way too much chaos. It's still nice to have the option to bring them though. found these metal grate rugs and decided to put them by the doors to add to the industrial vibe. I figured they seemed like they could have been drains for when they used to hose down the work floor back when this place was some sort of a working industrial building. Adding to that converted industrial theme even more, the exterior walls by where the food stands are, I made those into old loading dock areas. These would probably be pretty useful still for the different food stalls to receive deliveries. These garage doors don't actually function as doors in The Sims, but the idea stands. Hey, if you made it this far, why not send a like my way? It's a quick, kind thing to do, and it really helps out. If you're liking this build, then you'll probably also like my other videos, so go ahead and subscribe. I would love to have you join us here. Here, I'm working on adding some interest to the facade. Since we're just working with two big boxes, I added in more pillars out here to create a little more dimension to this exterior. I also used multiple sidings with different colors, textures, and materials. We've got lots of grays, blacks, and some yellow, orange wood tones mixed with lots of concrete, brick, and metal. To help soften up these very boxy, industrial features, I added in some greenery in the walls out here. Back inside, I put this bar area upstairs. My thought for this is that it's like a little satellite taproom thing for a local brewery that's located elsewhere. I actually already built a brewery a while back, so maybe I'll pretend like that's the main brewery that this stand is part of. I'll have to do a stop motion build video on that one for y'all too. Maybe I'll do that this summer. If you don't wanna wait, you could also just download that from my Sims 4 gallery page if you're interested in playing with that build. Speaking of previous builds, I also already shared a video on my teen hang block lot that I'll link up on the screen here. It has a pizza parlor, arcade, a comic and gaming store, and a haunted house. So if you're liking this build and want more spots for your teens to visit, that video will be right up your alley, so definitely check it out. This entrance wall here was a bit too blank, so I put in a bunch of these big factory windows from Moschino stuff. I had already put a bunch of decor on the interior side of this wall, which I had liked, but the windows were just too good to pass up, so I ended up taking off all that decor and spreading it around the rest of the interior. For the roof, I wanted to add in some trim along the edges, so I added in flooring squares across the entire top, then put the roof back on. Doing that helped make the transition from the walls to the roofing look much more polished. So I did the same thing with the other roofs and changed up the trim for each building section. Quick building tip. In order to place multiple different trims on each part, you have to hold down the shift key while you do it. That way the trim only places on the smaller sections that you click on 
instead of them auto-placing across the entire top surface. In that tall alcove thing on the left, I put some sized up wall decor items that looked like they could be the sign for the food hall. I really wish we had some more options for commercial lot signage in this game. I love building community lots and good signage can really bring the whole thing together, but I feel we're a bit lacking in that. I am not a fan of kits, but a commercial lot kit with a ton of signage and stuff could be a really good niche thing to do that I'd probably actually give in and purchase myself. This probably wouldn't be a particularly popular kit, but I sure would appreciate it. Do you have any very niche kit or pack ideas that you'd love to see, but probably wouldn't be very popular among the Sims community overall? I am fascinated to know what your ideas are, so let me know in the comments. At the front, I added a little playground section with a couple picnic tables so your adult sims can sit and enjoy their meal with their friends while the kids are kept occupied by the play equipment. I used to be a nanny and daycare worker and teacher, so I empathize with the importance of having spaces that keep the young ones busy and out of your hair long enough to give you a respite and have a bit of adult time. So even though I had teens and elders in mind for this lot, I am sure it'll also be quite popular with anyone caring for young ones too. Last up, I'm going through and adding in a bit of landscaping and terrain paint. I usually like to go all out with my landscaping, but there's just such little space left on this lot, and having lush landscaping just wouldn't make sense for a community lot like this. So I kept it quite simple. Just a few trees, some shrubs, and some grasses dotted around the small green space patches we have left. And that's about it. Let's jump into live mode so we can take a quick tour and see how this place functions. All right, here we are in Magnolia Promenade on the Roadstead 40 by 30 lot. In the front right corner, we have the mini playground area to keep your child sims occupied while their teen siblings or grandparents are eating and hanging out with their friends. I added in a bunch of graffiti and industrial pipes and stuff on the walls here to finish off the exterior. On the back dock here, there is a card table tucked away in this area. I imagine the food stall workers probably use that while they're on their breaks. The far side here has more mural spots for your sims to practice their spray painting. Back at the front, this patio has some outdoor picnic tables, a couple of comfy couches, and a busking station. All right, moving inside, this is the main part of the food hall. As you can see, all these food stands do work. You'll just have to hire the vendors yourself because for some reason, these stalls don't automatically have people coming to work at them. We've got two restrooms down here. I didn't show these off in the speed build, so I will show them to you now. I put up a bunch of posters in each of them, so it looks like maybe people have been plastering all sorts of promo stuff for different events in here. At the end of the hall, we have the bowling alley. I really like how the bar turned out and it looks like that's the one that's being automatically tended so that's good. I put those TVs up top there to sort of act like the scoreboard screens they have in bowling alleys. Your sims can watch TV on them too, I'm pretty sure. Alright, now let's take a look at the upstairs. The stairway is against the far wall on the right there underneath that arrow sign. I really enjoyed layering all the different graffiti and signs and posters all over the walls up here. There is another bathroom upstairs too that you haven't seen yet, so let's take a quick peek at that because it is a bit different from the other ones. For this bathroom, I put in a shower tub combo and a toddler potty. I like to always include these in community lots in case you need them for your toddlers or your dogs. Over on this side, we've got a ping pong table, some more comfy seating, darts, and a few toys. Just ignore that the kids section is dangerously close to the tart boards. They'll be fine. Maybe. And that is the whole build. I was a bit unsure about how a community lot for both teens and elders that incorporated all these really big objects would turn out, but I think it came together well in the end and it looks like a really fun place to visit in my opinion. You tell me though, would your sims enjoy hanging out here? Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, click the like button. I've got plenty more builds coming, so if you want to see more, be sure to subscribe and ring the notification bell so you don't miss anything. 
Remember, be kind to yourself today, and I'll see you next time.